Good morning. Welcome to Tabernacle Church, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. So glad that you're here this morning. I am Reverend Heather Ramsey-Mabrook, 
and I am filling in for Joe, who is on vacation. Now is our time of announcements. So if there are, is anyone who has announcements, you can unmute yourself and share your announcement. I have a quick announcement. Um, the legal and the financial committee uh, tentatively has a meeting tomorrow, Monday afternoon at 4.30 on Zoom. Um, so um, there you go. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Heather, this is Any Martha. Yep. And I have- Hi, Martha. I just wanted to remind people that we are still doing the fundraiser for our brothers and sisters in Ishkatapa, Guatemala. These are the people that we have been with on our mission trips who now currently do not have direct access to medical supplies nor food. So PID is raising money the partners in development so that they can help out um, and offer these services to the people in Ishkatapa. So we are having a mini fundraiser uh, trying to match $420. And you can write your checks to Tabernacle Church noting it's for Guatemala, or you can go on the website and donate and mark it as a donation for Guatemala as well. And we thank you in advance for your prayers and concerns for our brothers and sisters in Ishkatapa. Great, thank you, Martha. So again, checks can be sent or you can go online and mark them donation. Other announcements? It looks like there aren't any others. And so let us turn now to our call to worship. I will lead and I invite you all to join Brenda in the response uh, but while, while remaining on mute. People of God, come let us enter into this time of worship. We want to bask in the presence of God. We are here to worship God together as a faithful, and loving community. Although we find ourselves in separate places, let us bring our whole selves into this shared time. We bring our hearts and our spirits, our bodies and our minds. We bring our yearning and our thanksgiving, our concerns and our celebrations. We bring the fullness of who we are into this time. God is already present among us. Let us be present with one another. Let us unite as we worship God in spirit and in truth. And as we turn to our hymn of praise, I want to just lift up that our music, our hymns, are courtesy of St. Paul's United Church of Christ in St. Paul, Minnesota. We are using their videos with permission so that we could sing some new century hymn, hymns this morning. each other's ways, where love is lived and all is done, with justice and with grace. Oh, for a world where goods are shared and misery relieved, where truth is spoken, children spared, equality achieved. You welcome one world family and struggle with each choice. That opens us to unity and gives our vision voice. The poor are rich, the weak are strong, the foolish ones are wise. Tell all who mourn outcasts. 
long, who perishes will rise. Oh, for a world preparing for God's glorious reign of peace. Where time and tears will be no more, and all but love will Now let us join together in our unison prayer. Which I believe Brenda will lead us in. God of truth, compassion, and love, we yearn for peace and safety, not just for ourselves, but for all people everywhere. As your people, we yearn to have open and loving hearts, ready to receive your love and share it abundantly. We long to have ears always ready to listen and eyes willing to see the needs around us. We pray for the spirits ready to know your ways and the will to be your hands and feel in this world. We want to be the people you have created and called us to be. Merciful God, forgive us for the times when we do not see the pain of others, the times we refuse to hear the voice of those around us, the times we hesitate to act in love or speak difficult truth, and the times we look away from injustice letting our discomfort and fear overpower our compassion. We ask you for your grace, your wisdom, your guidance, and your strength. We pray this in thy holy name of Jesus. Amen. God in community, holy in one, by your grace we are who we are, your children, your people, your church, praying together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Beloved children of God, you are known and you are treasured by God. By prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, you made your needs and requests known to God. Find strength and comfort in knowing that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our scripture, first scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. 
When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Our second reading is James 1, verses 22 through 27. But be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for the orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. May God bless this reading and our understanding of this Holy Scripture. Let us pray together. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be accept acceptable to you, O rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So this past week, John Lewis was laid to rest. In addition to his time in Congress and being a civil rights and human rights advocate, a leader, a contemporary of Martin Luther King Jr., I want to lift him up this morning because he was also a man of faith, a sibling in Christ. He earned his BA in religion and philosophy from Fisk University and graduated from the American Baptist Theological Seminary in Nashville, Tennessee. He writes in his book, Walking in the Wind, about this childhood experience. He talks about how 15 children, probably cousins and neighborhood friends, were outside of his aunt's house, playing in the dirt. And the sun started to fade and the wind picked up and it was clear that a storm was coming. And the children were scared. His aunt was the only adult around and so she gathered the children into her home. Now her house was relatively small. It was the biggest, it was not the biggest one around, but with so many children inside, Lewis recalls that it seemed kind of full. And yet it was quiet. The noise of playing had stopped. Now the storm had come and the house was shaking and the children were scared. Even and then the storm got worse. Now the house was beginning to move, to sway. The wood floor began to bend. 
and corners of the house starting li started lifting up. It was an unbelievable sight. The storm was actually pulling the house toward the sky. In that moment, John Lewis's aunt took charge. She gathered the children and told them to clasp hands, to line up, and then they walked from corner to corner. From the front of the house to the back of the house, the wind screaming, the storm raging outside. And any time a corner of the house started to pick up, the gathered children and aunts would move to that corner to hold it down. And so it went for the duration of the storm, back and forth, children holding hands, walking, using their bodies, the weight of their small bodies to keep the house from flying. It's a powerful story and I encourage you to read it in John Lewis's own words. I just gave a paraphrase. But this vision is what he uses to describe how communities can face enormous challenges, things that seem insurmountable and create a better world. He notes that in the face of storms, it takes everyone remaining steadfast, not giving up, not walking away, but coming together and moving together. Creating a better world, what we as people of faith might call bringing the kingdom of God to this world, means gathering in the uneasy and shaky places bringing strength and presence to the places that seem like they are about to come apart at the seams. It's about being community and courageously bringing the strength and support of the community to the places that need it most. So with this in mind, let us turn to our scripture for the day. The gospel lesson is Jesus feeding the people. It's a familiar story for many. It is a rich and beautiful story. It is just one of many stories of Jesus feeding the multitudes. And as a preacher, I can tell you that there are endless sermons and Sunday school lessons about these stories, about the abundance of God's blessing, the power of Christ's ministry, the miracle of people sharing, and the amazing ability for God to transform what seems like scarcity into abundance. Now, all of those are wonderful things to talk about. But today, I want to take us in a slightly different direction, I want us to have a slightly different view of this story. You all probably know that as a part of Godly Play, the curriculum for children, which is also incredibly great for adults as well, they often ask wondering questions. And one of the wondering questions is, I wonder where you see yourself in this story. So if we ask ourselves that wondering question, there's a couple of answers. We might consider ourselves the observer, the wise observer, already knowing who Christ is, already knowing the power of Jesus' presence and Jesus' role in the story of God's participation throughout human history. We might also think about seeing ourselves as community, those needing Jesus, seeking healing and wisdom, those who are weary and hungry. And we might see ourselves as the disciples, instruments and participants in Jesus' ministry, 
witnesses of this charismatic, if not mysterious, character who preaches and heals and promises the unimaginable. So that seems like that's our three options. But I want us to consider that question again. But first, I invite us to step back and to look at some of the details of the story that may not be 100% obvious. So journey with me for a minute into this story. Jesus and his disciples have actually stepped away from the crowds at this moment. And they are attempting to mourn. Jesus has just heard of the grisly death of John the Baptist, someone he knew as a faith leader, perhaps a mentor, and maybe we would even call pastor, since he is the one who baptized Jesus. And so Jesus wants to take a moment to sit in the shock and the sorrow of this news. Not only because of the loss of someone in his circle, a colleague, but also news that probably reminded him of the danger he also faced because of his ministry and his preaching. And so he takes a step back, probably to breathe after reeling from this news that he has just received. And even as Jesus takes a step back with his disciples, the people are persistent in their need for him. They travel to, to find him. They gather to hear him, to be near him, and to receive his blessing and his healing. And Jesus responds. He goes to the crowd. He heals the sick and the blind. He is present with those who are gathered. The demand is large, and the crowds remain for hours, and the day begins to turn into evening. It begins to be supper time. Now, the disciples essentially, they start to complain. They say, Jesus, it's been a long day. Send the people away so that they can go find lodging and food for the night. Now, I think it's pretty fair to assume that the subtext was, Jesus, it has been a long day. We are really tired. We are hungry, and we're just feeling done. So we have some food, send the people away, so we can eat and call it a day. Now, this is not just one disciple speaking. We know from other places in scripture that the disciples often would come together and talk and decide what was going to be said and who was going to say it when something needed to be brought to Jesus. So we know that they probably gathered and grumbled amongst themselves for a little bit before asking Jesus to send the crowds to go their way and to be on their own to figure out what's next. But Jesus, instead of sending the crowds away, has compassion on them. He knows they are hungry and tired, and he's probably aware that since those who have sought healing are often the ones on the margins of society, they probably don't have a lot of resources. So he wants to feed them. He has nourished their spirits with his presence, and now it's time to nourish their bodies. And so Jesus tells his disciples to feed the people. And again, the disciples protest a little bit. But Jesus, we only have a little bit of food, just enough to feed ourselves. They don't want to really share. But Jesus has told them, to feed the people. 
He tells them to set aside their own inconvenience and temporary discomfort and to respond to the people. Jesus will not leave the crowds, the people, the community on their own. Jesus tells the disciples to share what they have, to embody his love and nourishment to the people. In that moment, when Jesus says, you, disciples, you go and feed the people, he's instructing the disciples to be his hands and feet among the crowd. And so he blesses the resources that they have and all are fed. When we think about that wondering question, I think it's easy to think of ourselves as the crowd, the ones in need, the ones seeking healing and nourishment, waiting for Jesus to bless us. It's true. There are plenty of times that we as people, as individuals, sometimes as community, are the crowd. It's a little harder to see ourselves as the disciples, especially when the disciples are not being their best selves. But I want us to go there this morning. I want us to look at the story seeing ourselves as the disciples. We actually will find quite a bit of similarity. We are in the midst of a pandemic. We are feeling sad, perhaps isolated. It has been a long road already and we are still not on the other side. There has been news of danger, and death, we feel the fear and many are feeling the grief of losing a friend, a neighbor, or a loved one to COVID. Some have lost those who are near and dear to them for other health reasons, but COVID has made those last important moments out of reach. And we are all grieving the loss of safety and normalcy and connection. So like the disciples who have been on the road with Jesus for quite a while and who have heard the violent, oppressive ways of the government, the powers that be of the time, they are, were probably fearing for their own safety as well and the safety of Jesus. Like the disciples, we are both tired, perhaps scared, weary, and longing for a more settled way of life. The disciples, after a long day of ministry, are tired, perhaps scared, weary, and perhaps longing for a more settled way of life. And, and yet Jesus is not done with the disciples, not done with the crowds, and Jesus is certainly not, not done with us yet. If we look beyond where we are as a community, as a church, we see the crowds. We see the wider community, people who are hurting, people who need hope, people who need to be heard who need to be treasured, people from the margins, people who are in need of healing, waiting for acknowledgement and compassion, people who are hungry, some who are literally hungry for food, but many who are hungry for dignity, humanity, safety, justice, peace, hungry to be seen and heard. So when we look out into the community, as followers of Jesus, we know that this is part of the deal. A huge part of the work of faith is to be the hands and feet, the heart and the ears 
of Jesus in this world. So when we look out into the community, whether it is our church community, our local community, our nation, or the world, we remember that Jesus calls us to hear the cries, to see the humanity of each person, not simply a crowd, and to offer the gifts that we have been given. In this story, if we are the disciples, in our story, rather than send the crowds, the community away, how might we embody love, listen to the needs and respond? How might we ask what the needs of our community are? What are the needs of our community? What are the cries of the people around us? Who are the ones on the margins who have been traveling lonely and difficult roads just to be heard and to be healed of their suffering? What stories, if we listen to the crowds, if we listen to the community, might we find hard to hear? As we consider this, I think it's important to look at our epistle lesson from James. Epistle means letter. And so the passage from James reminds us of our call to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the way of Jesus. So once we have heard the needs and we know the way of Jesus, we must be doers. Those who hear the wisdom of God and the teachings of Jesus but don't do anything with them are easily distracted and easily led astray, according to the letter of James. He writes that it seems like it's almost as if they are seeing themselves in a mirror. And then as soon as they turn away, forgetting what they look like. But on the other hand, those who put faith into action, those who do and live the ways of Christ, it becomes part of who they are. Their daily living and action in life cannot be separated from faith and their relationship with God. The writer of James makes it clear. Living and being doers of the word means taking care of those on the edges of the community the ones who are forgotten, disregarded, and mistreated, the ones with no power and no influence. Let us be doers of the word. Let us be attuned to the cries and the needs of our community and our world. Let us be the hands and hearts of Jesus. Let us respond promptly and with compassion. Let us resist the temptation to talk amongst ourselves and spend time worried more on what we will say than what we will do. Let us share what we have, trusting that God multiplies our resources by blessing what we offer. I want to leave you with a poem. Um, a prayer. One of my favorite prayers is the one often attributed to Francis of Assisi. Briefly, just to jog your memory, it goes, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be cons consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in, di it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And so reflecting on that prayer, I offer this prayer for us as church. Where there is vulnerability to the virus, let us sew masks 
while advocating for the needs of frontline workers. Where there is homelessness and hunger, let us feed the community and create housing while examining the roots of poverty. Where there is injustice, let us walk alongside the downtrodden while working to build a new way forward. Where there is misunderstanding and misinformation, let us speak truth with love and compassion. Where there is hatred and division, let us embody the love of Christ and call upon the shared humanity, for we are all beloved children of God. Where there is fear, let us broaden our strength and courage by drawing people together and practicing how to uphold one another. O oh, holy God, guide us strengthen us, attune us, and call us. Bless us and embolden us so that we may do and see and be who Christ has taught us and called us to be in this world. Doers of the word, lovers of all people, and disciples who live into the ways of Jesus. May it be so. Amen. This morning we have the wonderful opportunity and blessing to gather at Christ's table to partake in communion together. Uh, if you, I, hopefully you have gathered something to eat or something to drink. Uh, if not, feel free to go do that quickly. We come to the table, the table where there is always room for everyone. The table where we gather to bask in God's love and to celebrate the ministry of Jesus. The table is open to all, so you do not have to be a member of Tabernacle or any church to partake in communion. It is the feast of love and it is the time of abundance. So come, for all things are ready. There is room for you and you are invited. So we remember the night that Jesus gathered with his community, with his nearest and dearest, those who he had empowered to do his work, to continue his work in this world. And so he gathered with them at the table and he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Take and eat and always remember. I invite you to hold your bread and we'll bless the cup as well and then we'll eat them together. When the meal had ended, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink deeply for this is the cup of the new covenant. Poured out for the forgiveness of sins and sealed with my blood, the very essence of my being. The apostle Paul reminds us each time that we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we do so remembering Jesus until he comes again. Ministering to you in the name of Jesus Christ, I offer you the bread of heaven and the cup of blessing. I invite you to take the elements and eat them now. Let us give thanks and pray together. Holy God, we thank you for this meal that has nourished our bodies and our spirits. Continue to bless us, continue to enfold us with your love and continue to embolden us so that we might go out in and move among the community to exist in this world as the hands and feet and heart of Jesus. We give you thanks, and we offer this prayer in full awe of your power and your might. 
and we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved children of God, although you may be limited in how far your feet can take you this day, may you exist in this world, embodying God's love and being a doer of the world, listening for the voices and sharing what you have so that all might be fulfilled. Go in peace and in the love of Christ. Amen. like to stick around for coffee hour. It will just take a few moments to uh, have the breakout rooms and so otherwise be blessed this week.